Mankind's ongoing search for life beyond planet Earth has extended far and wide, and in recent times, all efforts have been heavily focused on the red planet Mars, which has seemed to be the best contender so far. But astronomers have now discovered signs of life on one of our closer neighbors, and it sure isn't Mars. High up in the planet's toxic atmosphere, researchers are convinced that they have discovered signs of what can only be thought of as life. Could this be what we've been looking for? The answers to all of the questions about life outside of Earth could be lying much closer to us than we actually thought, on our bright neighbor, Venus. Welcome to Tech Rumor, and today we'll be taking a look at all the astonishing new discoveries and insights into the possibility of life on the planet Venus. The second brightest object of our solar system, named after the Roman goddess of love, Venus is fascinating, terrifying, beautiful, deadly, and quite possibly alive and thriving, if new findings are accurate. Our planet Earth actually shares many things in common with the planet, being very similar in size, mass, and even density that oftentimes people will even refer to Venus as the Earth's evil twin. It's one of the few rocky worlds in our solar system which also happens to have a thick atmosphere and active volcanoes. The planet's interior core consists of a metallic iron roughly 2,400 miles, then a molten rocky mantle of 1,200 miles, and finally a basalt crust about 6 to 12 miles thick. It's also the hottest planet in our solar system despite not being nearest to the Sun. This is due to the high concentration of carbon dioxide in Venus's atmosphere, which produces an extremely intense greenhouse effect, similar to the one on Earth, thus trapping the heat in the atmosphere almost like a blanket, making it very, very hot. Think of it as a very extreme version of the greenhouse effect that warms up the Earth. Temperatures on the planet are also extremely scorching, reaching about 471 degrees Celsius that could even melt lead. Scientists believe that Venus may have once been a water-covered planet with good living conditions, but it's now quite deadly. Coupled with the soaring heat, it also has a hellish atmosphere consisting mainly of carbon dioxide and clouds of sulfuric acid. Its atmosphere is heavier than all of the other planets too. To put that into perspective, its surface pressure is easily 90 times that of the Earth's. The water that once existed on the planet evaporated quickly because of the sun during its evolution, making the planet's surface extremely dry. Spinning clockwise on its axis, unlike the other planets in the solar system, the bright planet is easily visible in the sky, and it was actually the first planet to have its motions measured. For being named after a Roman deity, known for love, femininity, and luminosity, this sure is one heck of a deadly planet. Being so close to Earth, it should be very easy to study the planet and launch probes into it. But in reality, the mere fact that any technology can even reach the planet is quite remarkable, owing to the intense heat and crushing air pressure. Several attempts of course have been made to further explore and get up close and personal with the planet. But no one has had more interest in Venus than the Russians. Looks like they got the memo long before we did. The United States, Soviet Union, the Japanese Aerospace Exploration Agency, and the European Space Agency have all sent spacecraft to the planet like NASA's Marina 2 that came within just 21,600 miles of the planet. It was actually the Soviet Union's Venera 9 that brought back the first pictures of the planet's surface. NASA's Magellan was able to generate maps of 98% of the Venusian surface while Venus Express, launched by the ESA, successfully orbited the planet for eight years, after which it got charred to a crisp by Venus's toxic heated atmosphere after running out of propellant. Japan's Akatsuki mission launched in 2010 finally entered Venus's orbit, despite initial setbacks and is there to this very day, calculating and studying weather patterns and on the hunt for active volcanoes. But the search for extraterrestrial life and other possible Earth that can hold life is very limited to planets like Mars or moons like Titan, Europa, and even Enceladus. But what about Venus? With its deadly environment, it's hard to imagine how it could ever be possible and it's understandable why a planet like Mars would be a more likely candidate. But in 2020, a shocking new discovery is leading researchers and scientists to believe that there is a possibility that life could somehow exist on the planet and that we may have been missing out this entire time. So what has everyone's head spinning when it comes to Venus? Well, it's something known as phosphine. This chemical compound is seen on Earth and has also been spotted on planets like Jupiter and Saturn and is now believed to appear even on Venus. The team was led by Jane Greaves of Cardiff University, 
who reported the finding, though they do not have a sample of the compound, have been able to detect chemical phosphine in the planet's thick atmosphere using the James Clark Maxwell Telescope JCMT, in Hawaii and the Atacama Large Millimeter Array ALMA, in Chile. After the initial observations were followed up, it was found that what Greaves had observed was indeed a pattern of light that matched exactly what phosphine would emit within the planet's clouds. So what exactly does this mean for life on Venus? Phosphine exists in many strange ways, like for example on Earth, you could find it as a rat poison. But it has also been seen alongside certain groups of microorganisms and on Earth the compound is actually produced by microbes as they decay chemically. This has now led many to believe that if the microbes could create phosphine, then perhaps these microbes are the ones responsible for the phosphine found in the Venus atmosphere. The researchers and their team made exhaustive studies and analysis to see if there could be any other reason why phosphine could be produced in Venus's harsh environment. But it all led to the same conclusion that the only plausible answer is that there has to be presence of life there. One of the scientists even stated that astronomers are now thinking of ways to justify the presence of phosphine, but the more they study it, the more it looks like the phosphine presence could be a sign of life in Venus's clouds. They considered every chemical and physical pathway, abiotic in nature, that could produce phosphine and even thought of surface minerals, volcanic activity, sunlight, lightning, and more. But even with all these scenarios, the amount produced would only be a fraction of what has actually been observed in Venus's clouds. Venus is a very challenging environment for any form of life to exist, as we already know. But if these findings hold any kind of truth to them, then there is only one possible place that we know of where they could possibly be. There is a narrow temperate band within the heated planet's atmosphere that is between 48 and 60 kilometers above the surface where the temperatures usually range from 30 to up to 200 degrees Fahrenheit. If life does exist on Venus, then this little layer of atmosphere or cloud deck, as some would call it, is the only place where it could possibly survive. This is the very cloud deck where the scientists observe the signals of phosphine, so it seems more and more likely. The new discovery has opened up many possibilities for life, even if it's just limited to the narrow envelope of atmosphere. It goes to show that a planet as deadly and inhospitable like Venus could have an atmosphere with an aerial habitable envelope. Researchers are also now focusing their attention on the lower layers of Venus's atmosphere that could be crucial for the survival of a Venusian biosphere. Although many argue that this discovery of phosphine in the planet's atmosphere is nothing really groundbreaking, because technically biomolecules have been in Venus's atmosphere before, what makes this so special is that it is very difficult, if not close to impossible, to make phosphine on rocky planets, and Earth has been the only terrestrial planet where the chemical compound is found, until now. Naturally, with these new insights into our neighbor planet, all space agencies are now turning their attention towards Venus. NASA has now more recently begun funding early-stage mission concepts that will be focusing only on Venus in the coming decades. Scientists and astronomers are even digging into data collected from older missions to possibly find some connections to what has recently been discovered. Who knew it would take a little phosphine for NASA to finally notice Venus? Some other NASA researchers have also been investigating the possibility of using airships to explore the temperate regions of Venus's atmosphere. In 2021, NASA announced two new missions to Venus that will be launched by 2030. They even announced that they will be sending Da Vinci and Veritas for the next round of discovery and exploration missions to the planet. And what's better is NASA is setting aside $500 million per mission. Japan, India and Russia too have their separate upcoming missions planned for the planet. The European Space Agency too has jumped on the bandwagon and rushed to announce that it will be launching a mission dubbed Envision to the planet by the early 2030s. So far, Venus has been garnering all the attention she rightfully deserves and we cannot wait to see what more she has to offer. If anything, this has now taught us that Venus is surely not one to be overlooked and we definitely shouldn't be ruling out our own neighbors in the solar system. Whether or not these signs prove to be true, only time will tell. But for now, Venus is proving to be an intriguing new place of discovery. So what do you think? Could there really be any life on Venus? Let us know in the comments. Please like and share the video and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.